Welcome to Easy Physiology and Research Pro. Today, we're diving into one of the most dynamic and vital systems of the human body, the muscular system. From movement to posture, from circulation to digestion, muscles are at work constantly. Let's simplify the science behind how your body moves. By the end of this session, you'll be able to identify and differentiate between the three types of muscle tissue. Understand their structural components from a macroscopic to molecular level. And compare how they function in different physiological settings. Let's begin with the types of muscles. First, skeletal muscle. This is the voluntary, striated muscle that attaches to your bones and enables movement. As the next type appears, cardiac muscle, you'll see it's also striated but involuntary and exclusive to the heart. Its intercalated discs allow it to contract rhythmically. Finally, we have smooth muscle. It's involuntary and non-striated, found in the walls of your internal organs like the intestines and blood vessels. It contracts slowly and steadily, supporting vital internal functions. Together, these muscles make up nearly half of our body mass, a testament to their importance. Zooming in, let's explore skeletal muscle anatomy. What you see externally, those visible muscles, are actually bundles of fascicles. Now watch as each fascicle is shown to contain many muscle fibers. Going even deeper, you'll notice that each muscle fiber is packed with contractal threads called myofibrils. These are where the action really happens. We now peel back the layers. The entire muscle is composed of multiple fascicles. Within each fascicle, we find the muscle fibers, and inside each fiber are the myofibrils made of actin and myosin, the real workhorses of contraction. Muscle cells are quite special. Unlike typical cells, they're large, cylindrical, and contain multiple nuclei, positioned just under the membrane. Why? Because they're packed with myofibrils that need room to operate. And those myofibrils? They contain the proteins actin and myosin that actually generate force. Here comes the hero of muscle contraction, the sarcomere. It's the segment between two Z-lines. Within this segment, you'll see thick filaments, that's myosin, placed centrally, and thin filaments, actin, anchored to the Z-lines. When sarcomeres contract in unison, the whole muscle shortens and produces movement. This is where function meets form. Myosin, the thick filament, has heads that reach out and grab onto actin, forming what we call a cross bridge. Each cross bridge cycle uses ATP and shifts the filaments, pulling the Z-lines closer. That's the basis of contraction. Actin isn't alone. It's part of a sophisticated team. The G-actin subunits twist to form the filament's backbone. Lying in the grooves is tropomyosin, which blocks binding sites when muscles are relaxed. Troponin, a regulatory complex, decides when those sites are exposed by reacting to calcium. This trio makes the thin filament a finely tuned machine. Let's break down troponin's roles. Troponin T secures the complex to tropomyosin. Troponin I keeps actin and myosin apart. And troponin C? That's your calcium sensor. When calcium binds here, it triggers a structural shift, allowing contraction to begin. Here's how it all plays out. The nervous system sends an action potential to the muscle, releasing acetylcholine. This stimulates calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Calcium binds troponin, exposing binding sites on actin. Myosin heads latch on, perform a power stroke using ATP, and the filament slide. Z-lines come closer, sarcomere shortens. That's how muscles contract. Muscles are exciting, literally. They're excitable, meaning they respond to signals. They're contractile, they shorten and pull. And they're elastic, always bouncing back to resting length. These properties allow muscles to be versatile and reliable in action. With over 600 skeletal muscles, coordination is key. Some work together, these are synergists. Others oppose each other, we call them antagonists. This push and pull allows for fluid, precise movement. As the forearm example appears, notice how the biceps and triceps alternate roles. One contracts while the other relaxes, like a perfectly tuned machine. Watch this carefully. 
When the biceps contracts, the forearm bends. When it relaxes and the triceps contracts, the arm extends. This antagonistic pairing ensures control over speed and range. This same principle applies all over the body, from fingers to toes. Now let's talk fuel. Muscles rely on three energy systems. For quick bursts, there's the ATPPC system. Think of sprinting. Next is glycolysis, which kicks in for moderate effort, breaking down glucose anaerobically. For long duration tasks like jogging, the oxidative system takes over, burning oxygen efficiently to sustain activity. Muscle performance varies. Isotonic contractions move joints, isometric contractions hold positions. Recruitment of motor units, and how fast they fire, changes force output. Different fibers serve different roles. Slow twitch fibers handle endurance, while fast twitch fibers specialize in power. Training enhances both strength and efficiency. Cardiac muscle is a marvel. It contains intercalated discs, strong, synchronized connectors. Within them are gap junctions that let electrical impulses spread rapidly. This creates a functional syncytium, all the heart cells beating as one. And with pacemaker cells setting the rhythm, your heart pumps non-stop. Smooth muscle is different. It's found in places like your gut, bladder, and blood vessels. These cells are spindle-shaped and have one nucleus. They're involuntary and non-striated. Instead of troponin, they use calmodulin to respond to calcium. And thanks to dense bodies and plasticity, they contract slowly but effectively, even under stretch. Before we wrap up, let's look at some clinical links. Myasthenia gravis, an autoimmune disease, disrupts neuromuscular transmission. Muscular dystrophy involves defective proteins, causing degeneration. And rigor mortis? It's due to the absence of ATP after death, leaving muscles locked in a contracted state. To summarize, the three muscle types have unique structures and controls. The sarcomere drives contraction with actin and myosin. Calcium and ATP are essential. Muscles contract in various ways, isotonic or isometric, and disorders can arise from failures at any point in this system. Thanks for joining us today at Easy Physiology and Research Pro. If you found this helpful, please like, subscribe, and share with fellow learners. Drop your questions in the comments, and as always, keep learning, keep exploring.